Hey, this is uh, Minus 67 from uh, the Lost Souls. It's about 6.25 in the morning, getting ready to drive to the Alamo GT down in another city here in Texas, San Antonio. You can see it is uh, not light out yet. And uh, you got to remember you're doing this for toy soldiers. So we'll see you when we get there. So we're here at the start of the first uh, round of the Alamo Indy GT 2009. Just giving you a quick overview of what I'll be playing today. I'm playing uh, Lizardman with uh, three units of uh, skin flip up guys, a unit of three Croxmoons, two units of three Pterodons, and a uh, War Spear Stegodon, and an uh, Engine of the Gods Stegodon, 16 Temple Guards with a Slon, and a Scarvet PSP. <laughs> so I'll, as soon as I find my first round opponent, I'll tell you what he's playing. We'll get started with the game. So I finally met my first round opponent, and his, here he is right here. His, uh, say your name? Uh, Martin. Okay, he's going to be playing Wood Elves today. He's from Houston, part of the Beige Brigade. We're facing, uh, it looks like, one, two, three units of Dryads, along with one, two, three units of Ward Elves, respectively, two Treemen, neither of which are ancients, two units of Wood Elf Archers, along with uh, what looks like two level two, two, uh, three, three cat, yeah, three, uh, two level ones and a level three caster. Level three, level one. Oh, level three, level one, a BSV, and an Ultra Kindred uh, Noble for Wood Elves. And each Ward Elf has a position. Okay. And, uh, no check Sure, sure, sure. So we're going to probably set up and get started a little bit, and we'll check back at the end of turn. All right, we're back again. We've uh, finished our first turn deployment. I'm set up in a long line here in the corner. So we don't really have any terrain blocking over here. Uh, my opponent is kind of spread out in a nice long line. He's got his characters hiding behind the hill, and his uh, two Treemen hanging over here on the right flank. So we'll see what happens. All right, we're back here at the end of turn one. My opponent moved his uh, Treemen and all his guys over there in a nice kind of hook maneuver. His archers, uh, the, what's left of them are on the hill and down on the ground. This guy's kind of moved around, lays his ass over here. I've got uh, my Pterodons moved over and attempted to drop rocks. Didn't really do a whole lot. My uh, skins got out of the woods because his uh, spells do extra damage to me. I kind of formed a little uh, wall of stuff here. He killed one of my cross doors of shooting, and I cast a wall of fire on this unit. He killed eight out of ten of them, which is pretty nice. So we'll see what happens. And we're back for turn three. Uh, he did a little bit more shooting, nothing real fancy. One of his three men did the Stranger Root and killed an entire unit of uh, skinks in one blow. But he really didn't do anything else. He killed some Pterodons, and then on my turn, I charged him with my engine and did the burning alignment and did a ton of wounds to his stream to streaming for no reason. Uh, charged him, killed him with my BSB in the magic phase, and my Crocs yours ran over and punched out the last two archers. So we'll see what happens in turn four. I know we're back for turn four, which is a very bloody turn for everybody. Uh, he broke my priest er, with his uh, his last remaining treeman and it fled. Luckily it rallied, and I proceeded to kill that uh, same treeman with my temple guard. Uh, my war spear guy charged into four drives, killed them all, and then ran a two for overrun, so we didn't get into the next unit of war dancers containing his BSB. With some more running around, nothing else fancy. Not much else happened except that he lost he lost two treemen in two turns, and I lost my BSB to the Hail of Doom Arrow and my priest to a treeman. Right here at the bottom of four, uh, he did some more shooting. We fought a very useless challenge over here. My chief took a wound, but I killed his BSB. Dropped some rocks on him and uh, killed two dryads. Magic was totally ineffectual as his MR overcame me, and his archers fled from charge from my one remaining Croxagor and the Stegonite. So we'll see what happens. Here at the bottom of five, we did uh, double charge his archers with Pterodons and my uh, engine without a priest. I caught them, ran all the way over there. I got an irresistible 2 6 magic missile. Did split 10 wounds. He saved uh, five of them. But, uh, tw did 12 hits with 10 wounds, and he still has a guy left. He made a bunch of sixes. Finally finished off the unit of war dancers over here. I lost you the skins to uh, the dryads that ran off the table in pursuit to finish them off. Just moved my guys over to contest the table quarter. Just got some guys hiding in the woods. And we're about to enter uh, the top of turn six. Into the game. Uh, he didn't. Really, he tried to charge my pterodons. They ran off the field. I uh, I shot the giant bow. His character missed. Got irresistible can flag and finally killed his level four and the last of the war dancers. So the game ends with. A uh, few units hanging around and then very blood. If you needed another reason, this is another reason to come to GTs. Not that guy, but the people behind. We started the round two here with uh, Chris Sayek, who's my round two opponent. We'll be playing Ogre today. We've met previously in the, the Houston uh, IGT. He's got um, some Rhinox Riders, a Tyrant, uh, two units of Iron Guts, two units of Ogre Bulls, two units of Noblars, and uh, it looks like two, uh, two Butchers and a uh, Gorger. So we'll, say, uh, we'll come back on deployment. See what uh, skip the deployment here at the uh, end of turn one. He set up in a nice long line, and uh, I kind of bunched up around this forest thing here. Uh, turn one, I bane-headed his, his uh, hunter and killed him with magic. 
In his turn, in the magic phase, he made my pterodons run away and panicked the Union of Skinks on the far right. Uh, he's got a range of play spells, giving his guys stubborn. Right? Yeah, he's got stubborn going on. So we'll see what happens here at the uh, bottom of turn two. We had uh, some uh, exciting Noblar versus Croc score action. I uh, did a bunch of wounds with magic to the Rhinox Riders. A unit of Skinks stood and shot at these unit of Ogre Bulls and killed one. The Noblars in the corner of the booth or, or the table are still running away. They, uh, the guy, uh, Gorger, didn't show up, and I set up a giant elaborate trap to see if I could get into charge, and he did not. So we'll see what happens in turn three. We had a lot of action this turn. We had my uh, skinks running all over the place. There's a Noblar's family ran off the table. I overran in with my skinks and Troxler, which no longer here, into his Noblar's, which overran into a unit of ogres, which had his tyrant in it, which I didn't know because I can't tell the model. And it killed all the Croxgores, then got to charge into my Stegonon, which he killed the priest and the Stegonon itself. And my Pterodon's fled, but now he's in kind of an awkward position, so we'll see what happens here. Had a very exciting bottom of turn four, his Gorger. Uh, I shot his Gorger for three wounds with a poison bow. He charged me off the table edge, and I stood and shot with some javelins and randomly killed him. Uh, and uh, it's about all that happened. Um, the Rhinoxes did not rally and ran away into my Pterodon's, which is hilarious. Um, other than that, it's just a bunch of stuff running around right now. In the exciting uh, turn five, he charged my Pterodon, he fled, I did some more magic, did two wounds to his lord, we scooted around, he did a spell, got it off, did a wound to my chieftain and one st- and uh, one crew. It was very exciting. Bottom of turn six, the, uh, the tyrant did not charge, uh, which cost him nothing. Don't touch me! In the magic phase, nothing really happened. It was almost a dead tyrant, but not quite. My BSB finished off that unit. The Pterodon's held against it. <laughs>